Hello and welcome to another teaching from 119 Ministries. Our ministry believes that the whole Bible is true and directly applicable to our lives today. If you would like to know more about what we believe and teach, please visit us at testeverything.net. We hope that you enjoy studying and testing the following teaching. At the time of writing this teaching, we are in the midst of a global crisis. A virus was unleashed from China, wrecking the global economy and killing many people. Many have lost loved ones. Many have gotten sick. Additionally, countries around the world have imposed lockdowns in an attempt to mitigate this strain on the healthcare system. Millions have lost their jobs as a result. There's a lot of uncertainty and fear right now, and understandably so. But we know that the current situation isn't the first time that civilizations and cultures have had to go through dark and troubling times, and it certainly will not be the last. On an individual level, all of us have gone through trials and tribulations. All of us have experienced suffering and loss and sickness. All of us have been anxious and fearful about the future, wondering how we're going to pay a bill or take care of our family. What guidance do the scriptures give for going through these types of situations? The first thing we might note is that it's okay to be real about what we're feeling. The authors of Scripture experienced some heavy emotions that we deal with. They knew all about grief, anxiety, fear, and anger. The Holy Spirit inspired the authors of Scripture in all their pain to express their emotions the way that they did. It is okay to admit that you are in pain or that you are afraid. It is okay to admit that you're angry about your circumstances. The authors of Scripture did the same thing. Read the Psalms, such as Psalm 42 or Psalm 88. Read Jeremiah. Read Lamentations, which is an entire book of the Bible dedicated to lamenting the destruction of Jerusalem. Take comfort in knowing that God is okay with you being honest with Him. You can weep. You can yell. You can passionately proclaim your misery and doubts to Him. He can take it. But in the midst of your pain, Realize that there is hope. Realize that whatever happens in this life, whatever happens to our economy, to the country, to the world, it's not the end of the story. In the end, there is peace and joy and fullness. One day, He will wipe every tear from our eyes and there will be no more pain. And even in this life, crisis and tragedies happen. They come and go. And when they go, there is healing and rebuilding. We will get through this one way or another. There is hope. Things won't always be the way they are right now, as the psalmist declares. Psalm 42, 11. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him, my salvation and my God. As we wait for these troubled times to pass, besides crying out to God and finding comfort in His presence, what else might we do to relieve our pain and subdue the darkness? Once again, Scripture gives us some guidance. Isaiah 58 If you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. It seems that the cure for despair is serving others. As we focus on ministering to those around us, our own hearts are being healed. Are you able to assist your neighbor who is going through a hard time? Ask the Lord to reveal to you how you might help. Is there someone you know who has lost someone or who is sick? Reach out to them. Mourn with those who mourn. Bring comfort and friendship in their time of grief. Dark times are the perfect opportunity to shine the light of the Messiah ever more brightly. Take the focus off of yourself and things will be better. Pray for those who you might be angry with. It's impossible to stay mad at someone when you're praying for God to bless them every day. Turn your eyes from your situation and put them on the Father. Focus on what you're grateful for. On that same note, don't hesitate to receive love and support from others. Don't let pride get in the way of God blessing you through your brothers and sisters in the faith. We'll leave off with a quote from a Christian preacher, Charles Spurgeon. It is clear enough that the poor and the needy are not only observed by our great King, but the pen of the Holy Spirit has been much occupied in recording their affairs. 
ye that are poor and needy, ye that are sick and sorrowful, ye whose lives are spent in mourning, listen to this discourse, and may the Lord comfort your hearts. On a future day, when the great books of history, which, as yet, are only known to the recording angel, shall be read of all men, your story will appear. And maybe it'll be as memorable as that of Hannah or Joseph, and God will get as much glory out of what He has done for you as from any of the deeds of His love recorded in the inspired page. We pray that you've been blessed by this teaching. And remember, continue to test everything. Shalom. It is because of you, our generous supporters, who make it possible to offer these high-quality teachings completely free of charge. If you feel led to support 119 Ministries so that we can continue this effort, please visit testeverything.net and click on the Support 119 tab. Learn how you can partner with us to take the whole Word of God to the nations.